Alrighty, folks. All systems should be good to go. And how y'all doing? <laughs> uh, I say it often, but please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you in advance for any support that this show receives. I am extremely grateful for it. Uh, today, we've got a very special weekend edition for you. Um, let's see. We've got Hades. This is, of course, the final episode. Uh, a lot of reading <laughs> in this one. Uh, as I said uh, and alluded to previously, I will be reading through the in-game uh, almanac in today's episode. So maybe not the most exciting episode, but... One extremely important from a lore perspective, if you're at all interested in that. If you're not, uh, just uh, switch the channel or what have you until the next episode, which will be probably Spirit Fair, <laughs> and then we'll wrap up with Hearthstone. I don't know if you guys saw my mug or not, but but jam. I don't know if you guys can see the, yeah, the Hearthstone mug. I got one. Back when they were still available. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, it's like pretty much collector's edition now. If you have one, so. If you haven't used it, try to keep it in the box. Because, yeah, it's probably going to go up in price. Uh, if it's still in the original box, like, I don't know. It's probably going to start doing what the, uh, like, trading cards do and some of the stuff. Any, like, collector item. Uh, if you're able to keep it in mint condition, the price is just going to keep increasing. And I'm pretty sure, like... These are going for like 100 200 bucks nowadays. Maybe more, maybe more. I don't know. I, I haven't actually checked, but uh, if I had to guess, I'd say so. Yeah. All right, let me see if the game is up. Uh, so, we need this. Uh, I guess you probably hear it already. Uh, this, Spirit Fair, Hearthstone, as I've said. If I'm feeling it today, uh, we can also shoot for the Wild Level series. Rest of the Lich King probably will not be until tomorrow. I am planning on uh, stockpiling that rest of the XP. So that way we can get to the next level, you know what I'm saying? Right. But as for actual Hades gameplay, gameplay, uh, the previous episode is going to be my last episode. Uh, mother, I have to get back there. I have to get back there. If you guys would like to see more Hades content, by all means, let me know in the comments below. I believe we've seen uh, this dialogue between uh, Zag, the greatest, and uh, someone's a yappy dog out there. I might have to close the window. Uh, Zagreus and uh, the Night Mother, Nyx was in the previous episode. Uh, as I recall, Zagreus was a little bit feeling betrayed because Nyx did not refer to the fact that Zagreus could stay up there only temporarily. Uh, so he's like, why you know, why did I waste all this time going somewhere where it can only be there temporarily at most? And she basically said, I, uh, as I recall, that it wasn't meant for him to know. Uh, we can always refresh and just see if we can pull it back up. What are they uh, all about now? As for the historian, let me tell you. Uh, yeah, and He's sadly, finally returned. we were not able to, uh... I guess we could talk to all these people. We weren't able to reunite Orpheus and, uh, Eurydice. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how many runs that would take. But again, if you would like to see that content, let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd like to see. Hey, listen a moment, lad. I require your discretion with regards to whom we spoke about last time. The shade you met with at Elysium. Patroclus. I understand. What can I do about this, sir? It must be something. But you have to let me know what's going on. Simply put, he is the reason that I'm here. Patroclus lost his life before I did. Because of me. I shortly followed in a rage. When I arrived here, I received a hero's welcome. The father himself ushered me to Elysium. But that's not what I wanted. Why not? You wanted to see Patroclus. But he's in Elysium while you... Oh, no. Like, is it that much better down in Hades than in Elysium? It doesn't seem like that's the case. I didn't, like, brush up on uh, 
Greek mythology <laughs> in between the previous episode and this one, but I'm from what I've been able to infer from this game and from what I already knew about Greek mythology, Elysium is reserved for like heroes and champions. I signed a pact. It's a bit of a paradise. I felt the terms were good enough. He could live there, while I'd live here, at least for now. Such deals are most uncommon, and their confidentiality must be upheld. But let's speak no more of this for now, all right? I might be able to read about it in the almanac. All right. I gotta slow down a little bit. It's hard for me to form some words. I'll have to read more about it in the almanac. That's what I meant to say. Be gone from there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? And then boo boo. It actually is a pretty cool, like, stained glass window. Uh, and you guys will be able to see more of this once we're in Ulubar, uh, in the Ulubar raid. Assuming, of course, that will make it that far. <laughs> it is taking us. You are late, boy. Have you any idea what time it is? No. Wait, what? I vanquished you in single combat and finally found Mother, and that's all you have to say to me. <laughs> Nonsense. Don't you think I would recall such an event? Yes, he's can't be serious. You're going to pretend as though it never happened. She wants answers, same as I do. She demands you let me pass. Let me go to her again. Silence. This discussion is over. I hardly think this is the time or place to indulge your overwrought imagination. I know where I just we can continue right this discussion then. Why do I have to go all the way down to, uh, what is it called? Uh, not Tartarus, right? Uh, but uh, the, is it actually called the River Styx? I don't know, I'm not, I can't quite remember. I might have looked at Almanac, but. Do I really have to go through all of those levels to battle him again when he is right here? Like, what is the reason I can't fight him just in Hades? Is he too powerful down here? Like. And one of the main motivating factors as to why I don't want to really replay this game is number one, as I've said throughout the series, I don't really like the model in this game. The gameplay model I think is tedious, it's boring, and it's repetitive. And my prediction is that in this game's cyclical nature, we'll just keep repeating. It'll be like Groundhog Day, who will keep repeating the same thing over and over again, run after run after run. And frankly, I just don't find that fun. Like, and as such, as I said, this will probably be the last episode. <laughs> and I'll be somewhat glad to be done with this game and series for that reason. Like if there was more variety, if there were more changes from run to run, I could maybe have found the game more enjoyable. But as it was, it was a bit too repetitive and a bit too tedious, in my opinion. And I'm comparing it to Elden Ring, that's perhaps an unfair comparison, Elden Ring came out later, I believe there was a much bigger team, FromSoft, uh, working on Elden Ring, so maybe not exactly the most fair comparison, but I think the points that I made, uh, that I made in the past still stand. That, um, you know, game philosophy and design is still game philosophy and design, whether you're looking at an indie or a triple A. Right? I got you something, Orpheus. It's a new song from someone who still cares for you. My friend, you wrote a song for me. Oh, but this is not from you, it's from... Can you unplay my stuff in the back? I... No. I, I, I don't know what tracks. to say. I... I... Take all the time you need, mate. Child, your father fell to you as once his father fell to him. Although you were substantially more merciful, I know it is a bitter victory at best. Though, tell me, what transpired subsequently that you have returned? Did you locate your birth mother? I did. I... She was there. She was where you said she'd be. And more than I imagined, but I had so little time with her. I can't survive up there for very long. Why didn't you tell me I'd just die no matter what? You weren't meant to know, I believe she says. Oh, my child. I say this seldomly, oh, okay. but I did not know, or I did not wish to believe that the service would have such an effect on you. 
But it seems you share your father's fate after all. So she herself did not know. My father's fate. But he is smugly waiting for me every single time I make it there and seems quite healthy by then, all in all. Though maybe the farther we get from this realm, the worse we get. Because he cast his lot, inheriting the underworld. I mean, Zagreus brings up a good point. Why is it the case that that doesn't apply to Hades? So I now presume you are bound to this realm by powers greater even Seems than that mine. Much stronger? Tell me something. If you knew that you could only see Persephone for but a moment's time, would you still make the journey to her there? Yes. Yes, I would. I had so many questions left for her. Then go and ask them, child. Steady your resolve and find her there again. And use well what brief time you have with one another whilst you can. As mortals do. As mortals do. Like, the... Uh, and again, Zagreus is not enough of a mortal to alter his fate. Like, he can't be up there for more than a few, like, moments in time. So, I mean, he really is, in an all-practical sense, like, he's not like Hercules in the movie Hercules. Like, he, I'd say he's the opposite of that. Like, he is more a god than mortal, uh, Zag is. Uh, and as such, he is bound, as we just... Uh, heard explained to the underworld like he is bound to Hades much as though uh, Hercules would have been bound to Olympus had he had more uh, of um, uh, being a god or godlike essence being a deity in himself like if he was more of a deity he would be bound to Olympus but he had to earn his way through that movie as we saw The way you look so sad sometimes when you come back in here out of the pool of sticks. Is everything okay? Because if there was something I could do... Oh, it's nothing for you to be concerned about, Dusa. I'm just having a harder time fighting my blasted way out of this place than I anticipated. If you'll excuse my language. Oh, I... This is silly, but... I had no idea anybody could be you. I mean, the prince? Greater than the mighty Achilles, more cunning than his father, faster than Hermes... You're just struggling, like me? I am. And that stuff you heard about me isn't true. Oh. You can take some awesome credit, stuff. Zag. I mean, it's not like you're uh, warming up the wall the entire game. Like, you are actually trying to get through Tartarus and Asphodel and Hades and uh, Elysium. Like, you are actually trying to make progression. Instead of just like sitting in the chair here being like boom 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 boom. Fine job, Thanatos. Like, and that's something that I've said before and something I'll say again. I'm really disappointed with what they did with Achilles in this game. Like, reading through the Iliad, Achilles was, was a, a, an actual hero. Like, he was an actual hero, and in this game, he, like, he doesn't seem like that at all. Uh, the Odyssey. I believe he was in the Odyssey as well. If my memory serves. But he he was basically an actual hero of the Trojan War. And you would not know that at all in this game. Like, he is just standing there against the wall reminiscing, <laughs> I guess, about his accomplishments. But, I mean, it kind of reminds me of that game like Hotline Miami. In, like, one of the Hotline Miami's Hotline Miami 2... There's an area of the game called the Bar of Broken Heroes, and basically there's like these war heroes and vets who are just like sitting there shooting the breeze, drinking booze and, and beer all day, uh, trying to like erase their past. And that's basically like what Achilles reminds me of in this game. A broken hero. <laughs> like, that's what he actually reminds me of. And again, I just wish they did more with Achilles, like, considering he What's for breakfast? His only weakness was his actual heel. Here's what I caught. Totally Easy worth jabs. it. And that's another thing that's a pain in the butt, it's fishing in this game. It's just, it's not easy enough to depict the indication of her fishing. And as such, you miss it a lot on timing. I think Animal Crossing 
as I said before, is pretty much the gold standard uh, for fishing in a, in a video game. Uh, and it's not perfect in that game, but uh, like the the way they manage the collection, the actual mechanics of fishing, everything throughout the fishing process as it's implemented in the game is done, in my opinion, the best way possible. And I'm not a fan. I've said it before. I'm not a fan of professions in games. Like I'm not a fan of fishing. I'm not a fan of cooking. I'm not a fan of doing all these chores. Games are something that should be to have fun in. You know, to be like carefree, to do raids and stuff that you couldn't do in real life. Like you wouldn't be able to kill Onyxia in real life, and that's like basically what a video game should be. Like you're not gonna be able to kill the Nameless King in real life. And that sense of fantasy is what makes games, for me at least, come alive and make them such great, enjoyable, interactive experiences. Um, and yeah, I just, I'm not a fan of professions in games. Uh, but yeah, I don't think, I really think they missed the mark with fishing in this game. Okay, let's just fully explore and then we'll crack open the almanac and do some reading. That's one more prophecy fulfilled. Yeah, we did this one. Uh, where is it? I broke free after all. A thousand sort of. darkness. Yeah, I broke free after all, sort of. Like, the way that this game is set up, you essentially can never experience true progression. You're always going to battle through Tartarus. You're always going to fight through Asphodel. Add infinitum. In cyclical fashion. Hades will always be the last boss. Uh, you're always emerge to find Persephone. Like, and because of who Zag is, he's a lot like Sisyphus. I've said that too. Like, he must always push this boulder of a game up the stinking hill because he is not meant for other things. Like, he is not meant to achieve his task. He's not meant to accomplish his task. And so... For Zag, the Sisyphean task is escaping from his prison, like escaping from Hades. But he simply can't. The fates would not allow it. He simply cannot do that. And so he must like it's almost like a like I don't know what they call it, like a like an existential play or something like that. Like uh, he has to keep repeating it over and over again. I know they have a specific name for that. Uh, but I don't know like I guess existential in a way but he has to keep repeating it over and over again like Groundhog Day and yeah again I'm just not a big fan of that and uh, the darkness the darkness too I think that also was not implemented correctly in this game because you can tell like we have 2,700 darkness at a certain point in the game you can't spend it on anything and I think that is a mistake. At least give it, give us the option of having it scale. How else can I improve? Okay, I didn't know I could do that. Pockets. Golden Touch gain wealth when you clear an underworld region. Five percent of your current going rank uh, you don't clear that many regions in a run like you only clear four runs I've mastered that and again that took like what 100 darkness to do and it's already mastered I have nothing else to spend my darkness on and I feel like and I'm going to make another comparison here, like to World of Warcraft. Like in World of Warcraft, I lamented in yesterday's Wrath of the Lich King leveling episode that it takes an extreme amount of money. Like it takes a high amount of gold to get Epic Flying. 5,000 gold. That's like 5,000 darkness. Like that is a very difficult to achieve mark. And over time, Blizzard has implemented these. Uh, like what I would call gold sinks where they introduced 
extremely expensive mounts to the game with special or unique functionality that players will find value in. And part of the reason they do that is so that way, number one, players stay motivated and have something to work towards, but number two, it also helps balance out the in-game economy. There isn't internalized inflation in the game because there's nothing for players to spend their hard-earned gold on. And this game has no way around that, in my opinion. Or at least from what I've seen, uh, that there's nothing else to spend, like there's actually nothing else to spend darkness on. Six skin, uh, raise your life total. Good bonus damage. Yeah, I think I'd rather have this. Maxed out already. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it would have taken like 200 darkness. 50 additional health per run. Ready, I think. Quite good. So it'll be a lot easier for us to rank. I'm wide awake. I'm wide awake. As many chances <laughs> as it takes. Cute Katy Perry. I dive in, don't want to fall down. I actually cannot remember the lyrics. Look what they did to your pink window, pal. <sighs> the exit. That's a pact of punishment on it. Finally. Oh. Um. Yeah, it's always the same thing. I'm going to get through all this. Yeah, it's always the same thing. Like, I might have more episodes in the future, but... Absolutely no promise, absolutely no guarantees. As soon as this is the final episode. <laughs> I'll say that. Uh, and... Yeah, Pack of Punishment, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, I'm gonna have to talk to Skelly, then we'll dive into the Almanac. There was something else I was going to say, but I can't quite remember what it was. Yeah, I don't know. If it's important, it'll come back to me. So what exactly happened with the formerly pink window over there? Now it's got these sinister orange flames and an enormous pact of punishment hanging ominously over the exit. Father stopped by. Pal, I don't know a thing about it, honest. I was just minding my own business when all of a sudden, wham! I get hit right in the back. I fall to pieces, no idea what's going on. When I finally come to, the window job was done. As likely an explanation as any, I guess. Should we start the run at least to see what this is all about? Up for some slicing, huh? I think in a sense I was basically saying that, again, there's nothing to spend the darkness on. Once you hit a certain point, you can't cash it in, you can't exchange it for anything else. You can't, and I've said this in the past as well, like you can't spend it on gems. You can't spend it on ovals even. Um, you can't spend it on those... Uh, Catholian keys, I believe they're called. It's only used to improve your character. And because of the thresholds they placed in the game, you run out of things to spend it on. And even WoW, I think, is better, again, at circumventing this problem with the auction house. Even a player without um, anything to spend their gold on will still find things that they can buy and sell and trade on the auction house. And with the way the progression is set up in WoW, and I know I keep making comparisons, they keep having expansions come out. And so you, as a player, you can save up gold in anticipation of the next expansion. So there's even more... Uh, reason and purpose behind what players do and are able to do within the context of the game and I think Elden Ring also takes a good approach to this problem by making it simplified you really don't need all this junk in the game like, you really don't need all these currencies and I think if there's one thing that Elden Ring perfectly demonstrated it's that like you need one coin Right, I can't even remember what it was called. Like, in the past, in Dark Souls, it was called Souls. Oh, oh, that's right, Runes. In Elden Ring, you had Runes. And there were different ways of getting Runes, but Runes were the only currency in the game. 
and to avoid the darkness problem, there were multiple things that you could spend runes on. Like, you could spend runes on uh, purchases through the merchants, as we saw. You could use the runes to improve your character and level up at the uh, bonfires or whatever they call them nowadays. Like, you could use them to level up and you could use them to buy things. And... If I'm not mistaken, you can also use them for upgrades too, but they're, the point I'm making is there was always something to spend or use your uh, your runes on. I don't think at any point in the game I felt like, oh, <laughs> you know, I have these useless runes. Like, I never felt that way in Elden Ring. Because they also increase the amount of runes that are required to level. And so they're able to somewhat uh, adjust the value in that way. Um, yeah, I'm somewhat forgetting how Elden Ring is set up as a game. It's been so long since I played it, but I think you guys understand what I'm saying. And of course, and kind of similar to what I was saying with the expansions, there's New Game Plus in Elden Ring in the Dark Souls series. So even if you didn't want, you would want to upgrade your character, because players are always given the choice, even if you didn't want to use those runes to level, if I'm not mistaken, you could still carry them over into the next playthrough. So the runes always had value. The currency always had value in the context of the game. And I feel like that's not the case for darkness in Hades. Like, I, I actually don't know what I can spend my darkness on at this point in the game. And maybe there, there really is a simple solution. You really can't spend it on anything. You're not meant to spend it on anything. It's just something you can keep earning and looking at and being like, wow, that's a big number. It's like math itself, like the pointlessness of numbers. Like, wow, look at that really, really big number. I think that I, that's what I like about money and math in general. It's like at a certain level, it just loses any and all inherent meaning. <laughs> it just becomes like completely mean, meaningless and pointless. Um, yeah. I would say maybe we have it because we're going to take damage with the sword. Maybe bone hourglass. The economic would be good too. Aaron can also be good. Okay, here we go. I think I'm only going to read the ones that are yellow because I don't really want to do that to myself. Mysterious. Uh, these are others of note. Should I. Now, let me read these two and then I'll go back. This is the Codex of the Underworld, aka the Almanac. In life, the wretched abomination known as the Minotaur was feared across the coast of Greece. He was cast into the labyrinth in which he himself was trapped, had no hope of escape. I believe there was an island in Greece. Crete, wasn't it? I believe it was the island of Crete, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments below. That was until the young hero Theseus entered the labyrinth voluntarily, slew him in what was, by most accounts, a spectacular battle. Famous, and it's so strange that they joined each other now in the afterlife in Greece. Famous tale, but what happened when they reunited in death needs to be told as well. Here they say Theseus again discovered the Minotaur, whose soul had lingered restlessly at the edge of the underworld. Theseus took pity on him. Though I think, 
there is more to it than that. Maybe they actually let bygones be bygones. Because, yeah, now they're inseparable. Like, you, you will face them each and every time. You'll face every single run, you'll face the Bonhydra, and you'll face Theseus with Asterius. You will never fight Theseus solo. Again, referring back to the cyclical nature of this game. You just repeat, like, ad infinitum. Like, you will fight the Bonhydra as we have done, like, dozens of times. Like, actually dozens of times. To the point where you're like face palming at your keyboard, like, is this really the 20th time we're fighting the silly boss? <laughs> they call the greatest king of Athens. The hero Theseus is nonetheless best known for his deeds earlier in life. Deeds great enough to earn his immortal soul a place of high honor in all of Elysium. Now he reigns in heaven, as uh, in this heaven of ours, much as I understand, he reigns in life. With pride and confidence, both in abundance. Kings I knew in life aspired to the same. But there's something distinctly different about him. It does seem kind of cheesy, you know. He's like, Get back, fiend! <laughs> I will thwart you! Like, it, it seems like he's kind of like, um. Like, I don't want to say the Crimson Chin, but like, uh. Maybe, um. What was that villain movie? Uh, the, the one that was kind of like The Incredibles, but not The Incredibles. Um, uh, dang it, I can't think of it. The one with Will Ferrell, and he's got the red hair. Uh, let me see if I can look it up real quick. Megamind. Yeah, the red-haired dude was the hero. One of the heroes. Yeah, Megamind. Um, yeah, he seems kind of like the superhero from Megamind. <laughs> In his, like, overall demeanor. And... Yeah, you fight him again and again. I mean, maybe that's what's different about him. When you kill him, he doesn't actually stay dead. <laughs> maybe it is that simple. And yet, he can never fight you solo. He has to always have Asterius. He's a Minotaur bodyguard. Bathrooms too. Right. Now let's see, Chthonic gods. I'll reread Hades, Zag, Dan. Uh, but give me a second, guys. I need to be right back. Uh, there we go.
and we are back. Okay, there we go. Alright, you can still see it, right guys? Yeah, I don't know why it takes a second like that to pop up. Sorry about that. Uh, I wonder if I should have a smaller camera. I think it's fine, actually. Uh, my camera's like just big enough for me to see. That's great. Okay, uh, so Hades, what is there to say about the master? Master, not just of the house in which I work, but of the entirety of the domain beneath the earth. The place we all end up after we die. He's a god of character, I have to give him that. In life, I once served as someone who reminded me. I once served someone who reminded me of him a little. Uh, yet even the kingliest of mortals pales in comparison. Suffice it then to say that the Lord Hades takes matters of his fate appointed unworld in utmost seriousness. His meticulous veneer gives way to impatience frequently enough. We know, <laughs> especially with his only son. This resentment extends to his never-ending work, for he presides over an endless procession of the dead. Master claims he alone can attend to their affairs. Begrudgingly, I think, he expects his son's support. For all Lord Hades, long since severed ties with his family on Olympus. He's a solitary life now. His son is his sole remaining connection to his family, and it appears altered. I'm gonna have to be right back to the end. I snap her, I get through the end. Dag. I uh, discover more of the story. Take one look at him, and I think any questions of his parentage are soon resolved. And that's one thing that's never explained. Like, why does he have a dark eye if he's not the son of Nyx? He's the son of Hades and Persephone, so why does he still look like that? There's no rational explanation. Take one look at him, and I think any questions of his parentage are resolved. He never seemed to like it much there growing up before Hades' full plan house. And they took him on as a disciple. Under orders from Lord Hades, the master worried that his heir lacked any firm direction in his life. Uh, who's speaking? Uh, Achilles. He Zagreus took well to his martial way to the martial ways. Proud to say now that he is my student. He was not insubordinate with me, as was his reputation. Proud to all lack of decorum from back then. I was the current. Uh, was his apparent age and made it easier for me to reach him. Then quickly exhibiting his father's strength and even great victory. Thanatos. You gods traverse the boundary that divides the surface realm where dwell the living, and this one where dwell the dead. It breaks high even among those of such authority and power. Although it's my master who presides over the underworld, Thanatos is death itself, whether asleep, an instrument for sending mortals to the underworld. Oh, I see. So he's like the messenger. Uh, more peacefully than violently, mind you, as I did not encounter him myself when came my time by Ares and Apollo's design. Yeah, it must be Achilles. Okay, be right back. Be right back again.
Okay, I'm back. Sorry, I've been having some strange things that are happening to me. <laughs> this is pretty cool. I didn't know that the mouse actually looked like this. I just keep doing this, guys, or keep using this? I don't know. I kind of like the controller. Okay, Olympian Gods, there's Dionysus and Demeter. Perhaps I ought to feel kinship with this easygoing son of Zeus. For it said that he has some mortal blood in him, not just divinity. This may explain why he among Olympians is so well loved by mortal kind, because he loves them back, bringing to them more joy than suffering, for the most part. Being rather unlike the other gods in this regard, he nonetheless maintains a careful distance from the interworld. Generally serving his, severing his ties with all his mortal followers upon the moment of their deaths. Why confront the woes of the dead when you can live in eternal feast? I would rather see it the other way around. <laughs> Who wants to live forever? You'd have eternal peace. Over time, mortals have come to fear Demeter, greatest, uh, oh, sorry, eldest of Olympians, the goddess of seasons, bring her plenty, take her way of it. And I imagine she's moved by any of their offerings. Much is said of her hushed tones, not unlike the ones reserved for the master here. Once she administered her gifts of sustenance with generosity, until some stroke of fate befell. She changed and has never been as giving since. The mortals who once prayed to her for plenty now beg mostly for mercy. My understanding is, despite popular belief, the meter is no direct relation to Lord Hades or his brothers, being born of more ancient Titan stock. She certainly has taken uh, pains to distance herself from Zeus in particular, often leaving Olympus for long stretches in search of something. And perhaps most notably, she was the last Olympian god that we saw in the course of the game. Uh, Demeter was and that's part of the reason why her uh, entries are so far behind everyone else because we, we actually just have not seen her as much <sighs> I don't know I believe she may be related on some level to Persephone considering uh, Persephone is also part of God right it might say it here wow there's still someone who's undiscovered again I don't actually know who this is. Okay. Greece. And yes, we still have yet another undiscovered location. I was born in a land with next to nothing in common with it, save for the fact that it happens to be the surface. Uh, the surface is a single entryway into the, his, this realm. I don't know why it's so hard to read, guys. That's the reason enough for me to mention it here. Greece, as I remember, was a vast, moody, beautiful country. I'm told both that there are many others like it and that none there. I can believe it either way, I think. Both can be true, actually. They're not exclusive statements, right? Because like doesn't mean in totality. You can say, for example, oh, she was like her, but there are still completely different people. Does that make sense? So, like, you could still say there are many other places like Greece, but still none that compare. You could say there are sim. It's a way of saying like there are similarities, but they're still altogether different. You can still totally say that. Again, they're not exclusive statements. Uh, Bone Hydra Splitter. Uh, there is such knowledge that the gods sought to keep well a field of mortal minds. The mortals who pursued that knowledge, undeterred, all their short lives. I did now decorate the lowest pits of Tartarus. Scarce few have ever demonstrated such a zeal and talent that the Lord Hades and put them to work throughout his realm. Nemean Chariot. 
Wildland of the Forget is perhaps best known for the monstrous lion slain by the hero of Heracles in one of his labors. I'm told still. The visage of this beast became a symbol of its prideful chariot riders who trained so rigorously they believed they formed a bond with their own vessels of wooden bronze. Turns out that their beliefs were well founded. They maintained chariots yet race across the moss and stonework of Elysium, competing endlessly, training for new competitions of their own design. Eternity of preparation for imaginary war, the best kind, I should think. We shall not take from them and their lives or king. Bright sword. Vaulted, such as the blade wielding bright swords, are bound to the arms they carried when they fell in battle with mortals. Severed from those arms, they make desperate grasp for them so they can fight some more. Why, if I knew so many warriors who would throw away their lives for glory, believing that the gods were on your side, refusing to consider, for how could they? Their hated opponents felt the very same. Everyone thinks they're in the right. Gods and mortals do look on this type of single minded devotion with respect, so these envied souls do wind up in Elysium, where they can fight on and on until they go through the face. Long spear. I know they could do only too well. I know uh, what they can do only too well. Their endless training regimen takes influence from the specific martial style I strove to perfect in life. Spear always having been my preferred weapon. For its reach and versatility, the exalted souls of course are masters of arms, would not have been placed within Elysium for simple military points alone. If the choice avails them, they would brandish those spears of theirs and fight a terrible wrath on the strong wolf. That is their idea of heaven. So I would ask, um, where do people go if they're only capable of military feats? And not masters of arms, would that be Asphodel or Tartarus? Strongbow. I always thought archers were simple cowards in the matter of their skill, but I'm not the one who is deciding who enters Elysium. Uh, is that Karen, by the way? Actually, don't know. As can be plainly seen by the abundance of such skillful arrow flingers as these exalted trouble. Sometimes no. The rebels still in seeing who among them can have loose their arrows with the greatest skill, preferring live target practice to the more conventional kind. Death can no longer stop them from improving in their mastery, however slowly the improvement comes at this late stage in their careers. These are those annoying guys who drop the eyes and then keep responding over and over. They are so annoying. I think they're all annoying. Because again, you gotta track down their eyes to kill the eyes before they come back from the dead. Unless they come back from the dead. Nectar. The drink of the gods is one of the underworld's most sought after delicacies, one of the only sources of tears in the realm. How the substance came to be here is unclear to me. Even I had some taste for it by now. Based on the few occasions when I've had a chance to try it for myself. We're good. Looks like father's changed the terms of our relationship. Congratulations, uh, congratulations. Your deeds have compelled Lord Hades to serve you an act of punishment. An uh, act of punishment. Ah, uh, not Anne. Okay. Here's how it works. The pact can be uh, can make escaping more difficult via various nasty conditions. Each condition you accept adds some heat to your heat gauge. If your heat gauge is full, you earn valuable bounty. In one bounty the first time you vanquish the boss in the general region while your heat gauge is full. To successfully escape, you earn more bounties if you turn up You can earn bounties for each weapon. How much heat you need is per weapon. As well. If you get too hot, try switching weapons. Yeah, I'm not even remotely interested in doing this. Uh, let's see. We haven't cleared Elysium or Sticks. Uh, the sword. Yeah, I don't even. Want yeah, I don't even want to do this at all. Like, why would I want to do this? No thanks. Why do I even care?
Perhaps Lady Aphrodite. We can only give up. Something is stirred within your heart, dearest. Oh, I can always tell. A certain kind of love for family? Yes, that must be it, I think. What could have transpired with you, hmm? I've always been a fan of this. Love and loss. Get dead. Yeah, you just have to clear the room. And with that, that should basically conclude the Hades series. I hope you've all enjoyed this episode. Please remember to like, comment, share, subscribe. Donations, Venmo, Stormer Show, S-T-O-R-M-E-R-S-H-O-W. Thank you so much in advance for any and all support the show receives. Hope you... I, I hope you really enjoyed this series. It's been somewhat tedious and annoying, even at the best of times. But I like the art style. I like the characters. actual gameplay itself I think was pretty fast paced and well designed but the overall model was but yeah we'll be right I'll be right back <laughs>